Good day everyone. I've just built a Mad Bean um, uh, Aqua Boy and I've had a few issues with it. I've learnt quite a bit um, on the on the path um, of the la over the last few days, um, and it might help you save a bit of time when you um, calibrate yours, and it might help you plan yours um, as I show you what I'm doing here. Um, but it was a partial success. Uh, I've used V three two o fives because um, the um, the MNs are there's too many fake MNs around that you you just uh, a lot of people, it's pretty much unheard of to get um, to get the MNs that aren't fake on eBay anymore. So, uh, or anywhere. So um, I went with the V3205s, but unfortunately they distort um, a lot, and the um, the repeats end up sounding muddy and sort of um, uh, yeah, they're just sort of smeared. Um, it, it's an interesting effect, but unfortunately, if you if you go for the long delay um, with the muddy with the muddy repeats. The short delay also is muddy as well, so you've either got to decide whether you want clean short delay or long um, muddy and short muddy delay. So uh, I, I've got the theory that I'd rather a, a pedal that um, had one effect that sounded good instead of lots of effects that, that don't sound that good at all. So I'm going to end up um, calibrating this to be um, shorter delay, um, but I've set it up at the moment for long delay. Um, I'll just show you what that sounds like, and it sounds um, distorted and muddy and smeared and all that sort of business. Um, not in a not in a very um, pleasant way either, in in my opinion. It's a little bit too it's a little bit too distorted, but anyway. <laughs> that doesn't sound too bad, but if you actually hit the strings a little bit harder. that distortion a lot of people are having this problem too I should um, mention um, it's a pretty common problem some people have found ways around it um, but unfortunately um, uh, it's uh, it's just not going away with mine so I'm like I said I'm just gonna settle for the shorter delay without the um, without the long delay part and because it, it's quite clean um, when you set it up that way um, so I'll just extend the delay and show you the maximum um, delay in this particular setup <laughs> tap the strings lightly it can almost give the impression that it doesn't have any distortion I've also lowered the input into the beat the BBDs as well it still hasn't made any difference um with that distortion just it's just it's a losing battle with this thing um, but yeah like I said it's partial partial success because on the shorter delays it sounds pretty good so um, I'll just show you how uh, a few things about the circuit in case you're building one you might or you just might find it interesting um, how it works um, basically first I'll just get the um, multimeter and um, show you how the voltage is set up on the BBDs so this the decade resistance box is connected to um, pin 19 uh, sorry R19 um, which controls the voltage into the into the into the BBDs on pin 8 and pin 5 and pin 8 and pin 5 are set up in a, in a way that they hold a ratio of um, 14 fifteenths so VGG which is pin 8 will have um, 14 fifteenths of the voltage of pin 5 that's just how this particular chip works um, and uh, I'll show you that now um, the voltages that I've got currently set up on this on pin Eight, it's 3.6 which is quite low and on pin 5 it's 4.3 so you can see it's kind of almost 14 fifteenths of, um, of, uh, of pin 5 uh, and if I reduce the re resistance on pin 19 that will actually drop and then the option to have the the higher delay will will disappear um, as I go down the standard value is a hundred ohms and on 100 ohms you're not going to get the sort of delay that I just showed you before it will be around I'm pretty much going to settle for 150 ohms I found is the longest delay I can get before it starts turning to crap um, pretty much so 
I'll show you what happens um, when we when we um, mess around with the with the um, with the resistance on the decade box. Also note that this chip's got a four to four to eight um, operating voltage, um, and I'm actually under four. Um, that's about the most that you can get. Um, uh, yeah, before um, before the chip will actually cut out and won't operate. Uh, so I'll just drop the um, I'll drop the voltage. Um, sorry, in a in a roundabout sort of way. All right, so let's start dropping the voltage. Uh, sorry, dropping the the resistance. So it's on 950 now. You probably can't see it because my hand's in the way. 850, 750, 650, 550. You can see the voltage going up um, on pin eight, but also the voltage on pin five will go up as well. As you can see, it's it's um it's going up with pin eight. So that that ratio of 14, 15 stays um, uh, stays the same um, even when you change um, R19 in case you're worried that you're going to you know screw up the ratio it doesn't do that so um, to next we'll calibrate this thing um, and um, I might just calibrate it on um, a lower setting on pretty much the setting that I'm going to want to keep it on it's actually harder to calibrate as you go down because uh, there's a there's a small clean window that you've got to find, um, but when it's on the higher settings, it just sounds distorted pretty much almost no matter where it is. But as you get lower, the the window gets smaller, um, but it sounds cleaner. So um, we'll start calibrating it. You'll need an audio probe for this, but um, uh, if you don't know how to do that, I'm probably going to do a video on how to make an audio probe. It's quite simple to do. Um, but in the meantime, I'll just get the multimeter out of the way. Okay, so um, on 150, now that I've changed the voltages and the resistance, this bias is going to be all over the shop, so I have to re-bias it again, um, which is pretty much what I've been doing for the last two days, believe it or not. Uh, well, you know, after work, two days anyway. Um, so let's see where it's at at the moment. Turn the volume up. Well, we do have actually some delay there, so that's good. So you can check if you're in a good spot with the delay first on the clock. Um, just turn it a little bit and turn it very slowly, and you'll hear it. it's kind of like when you turn the turn the delay pot um, on a on a um, on a delay pedal. It it, um, it makes that sort of whooshing noise as the as the time changes. But you've got to do it very slow. It's actually kind of hard to do. So also when you're on a when you're on a lower lower resistance on R19, that um, the whooshing thing actually is a lot smaller. I think that's why I'm having a bit of difficulty trying to hear it because it's so small. I think just that little crunching bit that we're hearing there is actually it. So I reckon that's probably about it anyway. <laughs> It doesn't actually sound too bad, even even though I haven't actually biased it yet. Um, so that's a bit of a, a bit of stroke of luck. But um, so that's actually the maximum delay too. So it's pretty much just slack. Um, but as you can hear, it's a lot cleaner, even if I smack it hard. I haven't even biased it yet either, so <laughs> it's already sounding better. Um, and um, obviously the shortest delay the shortest delay is actually the dirtiest too so uh, maybe we'll hear some distortion now can't really hear much distortion um, so anyway we'll go on to biasing it and I'll just show you a few tips on how to do that so that's the first thing I do is try and find that um, on the clock try and find that um, that the, the little whooshing um, noise. The higher you go on this, as I said before, the bigger the window and the easier it will be to find. Um, and the lower you go, the harder it is to find, but the cleaner it sounds. So I'll just plug the um, audio probe in and um, show you what to do with that. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is turn down the volume on your amp, because um, it's gonna be louder than um, the signal that we just had before. Um, there's a few spots on this bit that um, get a bit Get a bit of volume so just make sure the volume's low and that's the way that i check just tap your finger on the end of it because that's going to be probably the loudest that you'll your, your finger tapping on it is very loud as you'd know on um, the end of your guitar cable it's quite loud so when you do that 
um, yeah, you know that you're um, in the right spot for the volume. So the first thing to do is to put it on pin two and just make sure you don't have a um, high frequency whistling noise. And I'll just show you what that actually sounds like. I'm gonna, un I'm gonna undo my work on the, um, on the clock um, just so you can hear it. The clock trimmer that is, which is this one I was playing around with before. Try and hold that in place. Oh, you need to put you need to put the potentiometer on maximum, otherwise you won't hear it. There it is. If it's on minimum, um, yeah, you're not you 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 won't hear it as we as I just demonstrated. Also, you might want to put some cotton balls in the cat's ears because it's absolutely terrible that noise. But you want to pretty much um, the the uh, the Mad Bean um, calibrate instructions is to put it just outside when the whistling noise goes away. But I've found you can actually get a bit of extra delay if you go a bit past that and, and do the method that I just showed you before, trying to find where that whooshing noise um, is, is, the best, is the best spot for it. So that's how you check pin two. Now next, you've got to actually bias it. But um, I'm just going to make sure that, that, um, that this is in the right spot again. I'm just going to plug the um, guitar back in and just check it. See, I think that I actually moved it a bit further past that whistling noise, and I reckon it sounds better. So yeah, just make sure that you um, that you get that in the right spot before you start biasing, like I just showed you. So we'll just whack the um, the uh, Audio Pro back in, and this is going to be a single take video, as you've probably guessed. So you're just going to have to bear with me. All right, now you want to connect that to pin three and you can hear that the bias is in the right zone because we can hear the guitar. Pin three is the output of the, B, the BBD. If you're not getting a, uh, anything out of the BBD, something's wrong and it's usually the bias isn't in the right spot. So you want to put that onto pin three and then start mucking around with the, um, with the bias. And you want to get the bias in the right spot so that there is little distortion as possible. And smack on your guitar hard with like the highest, the, the most, um, the most volume output you've got on the guitar as well. So you know your um, uh, your neck pickup. So you can hear it's distorted. Let's turn it up a little bit so you can hear it. That's better already. Oh, no. Too far. Oh yeah. One thing. Before you start doing that, turn this pretty much to minimum. Um, because I'll explain that in one sec. Oh, when you're on the longest um, delay setting, um, there's a bit of a delay um, when you're turning the bias, so it's much harder like to hit it because it kind of you know, as you turn the, as you're turning the trim pot, like you know, as you, as the trim pot's you know going back and forwards, the the signal's actually following and behind it, so it's really difficult to find the right spot. But if you put it on the minimum delay, it's it refreshes much quicker, and also the minimum delay is the is the noisiest. So if you can get it sounding good on that, then it should sound good on the um on the longer delay. So that doesn't sound good at all. So let's find a good spot. That's too far. Go back the other way. Okay, so that's decent enough. It's still got a bit of distortion. I'm probably tweak it a bit, bit more, but um, I'll just leave it how it is for the moment. Probably won't sound too bad once we, um, uh, once it goes through all the filtering on this thing anyway. But um, uh, I did have it before where there was no um, distortion at all, so. It's tricky to actually get it um, to get it just right, but uh, uh, yeah, it's part of the joy of this um, circuit. So then you move on to the next one, the next chip. If you're doing the dual delay, 
um, and do the same thing. Um, and it's, if you've got distortion on your first chip, you'll hear that in the second one. I'm pretty sure that's how it works because um, the second one always sounds um, a little bit um, quieter and more distorted than the first one. So I'm assuming that this one's feeding into the second one. And it's got quite a bit of distortion, so I'll tweak that. So it's not quite as clean as I had it before, but it's um, it's okay, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'll bias it properly. Um, I might need to lower the um, the, the um, resistance on R19 to get it to get it right and muck around with the clock frequency as well. Um, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's still got a bit of um, distortion in it, but. Um, the low, as I said before, the lowest um, the lowest delay setting will be the most distorted. As soon as you turn it up a bit, it sort of goes away. No, it's still a bit there. But... So that's pretty much it for the Aquaboy. I can't get it to sound any better. I've spent so much time on it. I'm pretty much going to call it a day with it and just leave it as a reverb sort of spring um, slap uh, uh, slap delay sort of pedal because um, I think that that's where it sounds the best um, as soon as you start pushing it too far the distortion comes in it just doesn't sound very good um, so I'll just keep it as a as a reverb or yeah slap delay sort of um, pedal um, but yeah you might have better luck when you do it um, there's a lot of information out there there's a lot of debugging threads threads I hate to say it it's got a you know it's a it's a it's a pretty tricky pedal to get going. It's probably got to be up there with one of the hardest ones I've ever done um, up to um, to date because um, there's just so many factors to take in. You know, like changing resistor values and all that sort of business, um, and um, just just trying to get it to sound good. It's just it's just impossible. Um, but yeah, it's um uh, yeah it's good on shorter shorter delay. But yeah, it's just it's impossible to get it to sound good on the on the longer delays, unfortunately. Um, you might see more videos about the about the Aqua Boy. I don't know if I'm going to spend much more time on it, but um, I might do a demo of it once I've boxed it up. Um, if you guys want to see that, um, yeah. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.